Hello and welcome. This is part 2 of a two-part video series. Part 1 was an overview of the Weldon VMUX electrical system. Part 2 will cover network operation, downloader and diagnostic software, and will conclude with system troubleshooting tips. VMUX is a command-based system. There are two types of commands, digital or analog. A digital command is simply on or off, and an analog command is for variable data, such as temperature or amperage. Each command has a specific command ID number. There is a command database that correlates command numbers to command names. This database is split up into six different markets, fire rescue, recreational vehicle, trade show, military bus, and marine. Our focus will be on the fire and rescue market. The database is further split up into command categories, such as emergency commands, door switches, interior or exterior lighting. Each category has individual related commands, with intuitive names. The scene left command is an exterior lighting category, and will be used for our example. The scene left command is ID number 170. It is not important for technicians to know the command ID numbers, only the command names. The scene left switch is connected to a node 1 input, and the scene left light is connected to a node 3 output. When the switch is turned on, node 1 will send command number 170 onto the network with an on status. This message is sent only one time. All other nodes will receive the command and register the command as on. Any node that uses that command will respond accordingly. In this case, node number 3 will activate the output to turn on the scene left light. The command state will remain on until that same command is sent again with an off status. It is important to note that a command can be sent from any node in the network. All nodes react to the last command message that was sent, regardless of its origin. We'll enable the node 1 switch again, and the light will turn on. If node 2 has a scene left button, you can use it to turn the command off. Once node 2 sends the off command, all nodes will register the command as off, including node 1, which at this point still has an active switch connected to the scene left input. If the switch is turned off, the scene left command will be sent again, in an off state. Since all nodes already register that the command is off, no outputs will change. The green status LED has a steady heartbeat flash when programmed, and a fast flash pattern when not programmed. The red transmit LED lights when a message is sent, and the receive LED lights when a message is received. The VDR and high content nodes have yellow indicators to indicate camport activity. Use clean power and ground connections to the nodes. All nodes need to power up at the same time. Do not share the node ground wire with other devices. The node should have its own ground wire. A separate ground wire should be run to all the other devices. Do not over-tighten power and ground studs. They are molded plastic studs, and can break with too much pressure. You can add a second nut and tighten the nuts against each other, to make tighter connections if needed. There are three pieces of software that go into each node. The bootloader is internal firmware that is installed at the factory. It allows the node to accept the program binary files. The design binary tells inputs and outputs how they are supposed to function. This file is compiled by the vehicle builder and cannot be altered by others. Design binaries are truck specific. The node operating system or OS file provides functions and features for the node. These files get updated from time to time. Generally, there is no need to reload nodes every time a new OS file is released. In order to update the OS file, you must have the design binary file. It is possible to reload the design file without updating the OS, but the VMUX downloader program will not work unless the OS files are installed on the computer. The VMUX downloader program is used to load design binary files into the nodes. Node operating system files are required. VMUX downloader will not work unless the OS files are installed. The latest OS file versions are available at akronbrass.com. Click Settings, Node OS Versions to see what OS files are installed. These files need to be saved to the VMUX folder in My Documents in order for downloader to find them. Click the File button to select the design binary file. Browse to select the file and click Open. Details about the file will be shown in the lower window. The selected Node 1 file is for a Hercules node. The Target Node slider is used to determine what node will receive the file. By default, it will match the design file name. For example, our node 1 file will only go into node 1. Any other nodes in the network will not be affected. Downloader will automatically select the communication port when the USB transceiver is plugged in. You will see USB transceiver, not serial transceiver, 
if the driver file is correctly installed. Check the reprogram note operating system box to reload the OS file during download. The OS will automatically be installed if a blank note is programmed. Click download to start. Downloader will verify that the design file matches the node type, a Hercules node in this case. Downloader will try to find node 1 or an invalidated node. The download speed will be adjusted to the fastest allowable speed for that node type, and the download will begin. There are progress bars at the bottom of the window. This video is sped up to save time. Once the download is done, reset power to all nodes in the network. After reset, the node status light should show a steady heartbeat flash. Downloader can also be used to invalidate a node. Click options, invalidate node, and then set the target node slider to the node number you wish to invalidate. In this example we will choose node 1. Click yes to start. Once complete, you will see node 1 successfully invalidated. Click ok to exit. The VMUX diagnostics program is used for system troubleshooting. With it, you can verify communication to all nodes, monitor network messages, send messages, check for output faults, and download input and output information from the node. You cannot extract a binary file from the node to install it into a new node. In that situation you would need to get the node design file from the truck builder. Make sure the transceiver is plugged in, before opening the diagnostics program. It should show, transceiver detected and auto-selected, at the bottom of the window. Text explaining a button's function, will appear when you hover over it. The first four buttons are for diagnostic settings. Connect is button 6 and disconnect is button 7. The other buttons will be discussed later in the video. In tool options, detect nodes on connect should be checked. This allows diagnostics to ping nodes when connected. The message options are rules on how messages will be displayed in the lower message window. Show all messages will include analog messages, such as system voltage. Don't display duplicate messages will keep a command on a single line, and increment the count column, each time the message gets sent. Display data in hex, is checked to show hex values, instead of decimal, in the data column. Message logging, allows diagnostics to create a text file showing all messages, each time the connect button is used. The generate log, and unique log per connect boxes, should both be checked. In network options, there is a drop box to select VMUX 98 or 2000. Do not choose VMUX 98. It will revert to diagnostic version 1.4 and produce error messages. If it happens, click through the errors and hit network options to change back to VMUX 2000. The allow VMUX internal commands checkbox is rarely used. Check the send artificial sync box to get the computer to send the sync signal if node 1 is not present in the network. Other nodes would repeatedly send a VM out of network message if sync is not present. Set the nodes in system slider bar to the max number of nodes that you expect to be in the network. Do not set to 32, unless you have a truck with that many nodes. It would cause a long delay at initial connection, while diagnostics waits for ping response from nodes that are not there. It is set to 6 nodes for this video. Your connection method should be set to transceiver. Modem and pipe server connections are rarely used. Database options is used to examine information about the SD commands database, including version and release date. It is also where database market, such as fire rescue, can be selected. When you hit the connect button, it will ping the nodes and look for replies. There is an icon indication for each node that replies, along the left edge of the window. It is always node 1 that sends sync and system voltage signals. Sync will be seen in the upper right corner, and is used to synchronize flash patterns throughout the network. The lower window will show messages from the network. System voltage, and other analog messages will be seen in analog data, shown by default in the upper window. You can also look at inputs and outputs for I.O. nodes. Information can be retrieved from a node. First, click the node icon, and then hit the mount node button. The node icon will turn green. Click the flash information button to see details about the design program, and node operating system that is loaded into the node. Click the output diagnostics button to see node outputs, and then click Input Diagnostics to see inputs. At this point, you can see only input and output numbers, and the corresponding connector pins. To retrieve input and output details from the mounted node, click the Retrieve Node Information button. A prompt will ask if you want to download input and output names. To begin, click Yes, even though it will lengthen the download time. This portion of the video is sped up to save time. You can watch the progress at the bottom of the window. Now when you select an input, 
you can see what vmux command gets sent from that input. Switch type, will be either latching or momentary, and normally open or normally closed, and state will be battery plus or ground. A latching, normally open input, with battery plus on state, will turn the command on while 12 volts is applied, and off when the 12 volt signal is removed. When you go to output diagnostics, you can now see output names, and the logic required to enable those outputs can be seen in the relationships window. With this information, it is possible to send the commands required to enable the output. We will be demonstrating this later in the video, as troubleshooting techniques are discussed. The 6-step VMUX troubleshooting guide is a document that was created to guide people through the troubleshooting process. The PDF document is available at akronbrass.com. Here are the 6 steps. 1. Understand the vehicle. 2. Check inputs. 3. Check outputs. 4. Verify communication. 5. Divide the vehicle. And 6. Ask for help. This document is not always followed step by step. In a vehicle with no communication, there is no need to check inputs and outputs. You would go right to step 4. Step 1. Understand the vehicle. The key to fixing any vehicle problem is understanding how it is supposed to work. Schematic diagrams are helpful when they are available. The IO and relationship report spreadsheets are generated by the vehicle builder. They show wire designators, input and output locations, input commands, output logic, and load shed information. Understanding load shedding may be key to solving some problems. An intermittent report of lights turning off could be caused by load shedding due to low voltage instead of an actual output failure. Contact the vehicle builder to get IO and relationship reports, schematics, or any other information that will help resolve the problems. The builder knows how the nodes are programmed and where components are located. Here is an example of node inputs in a relationship report. At the top, it indicates that it is for digital inputs on node 1, a Hercules node. Node location, shown in the upper right corner, can be left, center, or right, and front, mid, front, mid, mid, rear, or rear. The first two columns are channel number and the connector pin number. It is up to the vehicle builder to decide what gets shown in the OEM wire column. In this case, it shows wire number, color, and gauge. The command column shows what VMUX command will be sent when that input gets activated. The on state column shows what signal is needed to turn an input on, ground, battery plus, or either. The type column shows how the input is supposed to work. This can be latching, which means the input is on only when the signal is present, or momentary, typically used with momentary switches. Hit a switch once to turn on, and again to turn it off. Normally open means the input is on with the signal present, and normally closed means it's on when the signal is not present. The comments column is a place where any helpful information can be added. Here is an example of a node output relationship report. At the top, it indicates that it is for node 1, a Hercules node. Node location is shown in the upper right corner, as it did on the inputs page. Also like the input page, the first three columns are channel number, connector pin number, and the OEM wire column. The name column should show intuitive output names, as determined by the builder. The priority shedding column shows if an output is set to load shed, and at what voltage. The left seen lights will shed at level 3, which is 11.7 volts. The relationship column shows what commands and logic are needed to enable the output. On means the command needs to be on. Left turn on output 5, for example, is on with turn signal left. Or, means that one command, or another, needs to be on. Roof marker lights are on with either marker lamps, or, engine running. And, means the multiple commands need to be on. Left scene is on with scene left, and, ignition. Both commands need to be on. Not, means the command must be off. Light bar clear is on with not park brake, and E emergency master, an E front light bar. It can only be on if the park brake is released. Relationship levels allow an output to perform different functions for a different set of conditions. The left high beam is on solid for regular high beam operation, on HL high beam, and HL low beam. The output will flash for wig wag operation level 1. It's on with E wig wag, and E emergency master, and not park brake. The gauge and rocker dimmer output uses relationship levels to adjust PWM levels for gauge backlighting. Think of a relationship level as OR logic. It will be on with either one set of conditions or another. Step 2. Check inputs. Toggle the input switch, and look for the command, 
using the VMUX diagnostics software. If you see the command, then the input is working. If you do not see the command, further troubleshooting is required. Use a multimeter or test light to check for proper signal to the input pin. See the relationship report to determine if it's a ground or battery plus signal. Common problems include faulty switches, faulty wiring, bad connections, or possibly a bad diode if it is an older truck. Earlier versions of the Hercules node did not have programmable inputs, and would be enabled with either a ground or battery signal. Builders would sometimes put a diode in line with the switch, to make it ground only or battery only. Generally, an input diode failure would be a broken lead, not a burned out diode. Step 3. Check outputs. Remove the output connector from the node, and apply 12 volts to the wire going to the device that is not working. Use a source protected with a fuse or breaker, in case there is a short circuit. If the device turns on, you know the device and wiring is good. Further investigation is required to determine why the node is not supplying the voltage. Use a voltmeter to check output voltage. When the output is on, it should be near battery source voltage. An output that is off, with no load attached, may have a floating voltage of up to 9 volts. This floating voltage is caused by internal fault detection circuitry. It can cause small LED lights to glow dimly. Common problems are bad device ground, blown light bulb, bad connection, or load shedding due to low voltage. The output might also be off for a diagnostic fault. Once a fault occurs, it will stay off until node power gets reset. If the output is not turning on, make sure it has all the commands required to turn it on. You can use VMUX diagnostics to send the command messages. Use the relationship report to determine what command logic is needed. If you don't have the report, it is possible to get that information from the node using the diagnostics program. To send a command in diagnostics, first make sure it is connected to the network. Select the command category in the left drop-down box, and then select the actual command in the right drop-down box. Select on or off, and click the send button. The command should appear in the lower window. You may need to do this for all commands that are included in the output logic. If the output turns on, you know the output is not blown, and you may need to do input troubleshooting to find out why the needed commands are not being enabled. You can use diagnostics to determine if a command is on or off, by asking any node in the network. Click Special Functions, Command Query. Select which node will be asked, choose the appropriate command category, and then select the command. Click Send, and a response will show if the command is on or off. In this example, the scene left command was off, so we enabled the switch and asked again. This time the command was on. If the output is not on and you determine that it has all the commands that it needs, and the output shows no diagnostic faults, then the output FET might be blown. The node would need to be sent back to the factory for repair. Step 4. Verify communication. Ping the nodes from Diagnostics or a Vista display. Ping replies should be very quick. If nodes reply slowly, then a communication problem is likely. Watch for system voltage in the sync signal, which happens every few seconds. These messages come from node number 1. When other nodes do not see the sync signal, they send a VM out of network message, every few seconds. If you can see those messages, then there is network communication, just not from node 1. Check PC and BC collision counters in diagnostics. They indicate communication problems between the computer and the VMUX network. These should be at, or near zero. If these counters are incrementing quickly, it usually indicates a wiring problem, such as backwards COM wires to one or more nodes. A network collision occurs when a node tries to send a message, and another node is trying to send a message at the same time. The node recognizes that a collision happened, because the message checksum value will be incorrect. Network collisions are normal, but the number of collisions that occur should be low. You can use diagnostics to see how many collisions that a node has detected. Select the node icon, click the mount node button, and then click monitor node collisions. The collision number should be at or near zero, but busy networks will likely have more collisions. If the collision count is high, say 100 or more, then a communication problem is likely. Water or corrosion in the network connectors could be a possible cause. Step 5. Divide the network. If communication is lost, divide the network to identify which part of the network is causing the problem. If you remove a branch of the network and communication returns to the rest of the nodes, then you know the problem lies with that branch, and you can troubleshoot accordingly. 
Common communication problems are water intrusion in the Y splitters, shorted or open communication wires, and pins not properly locked into connector housings. It would be unusual to find backwards wiring on trucks that are complete. This is an issue that would be found and fixed at the factory. Check ground wires to all nodes. A node with a bad or missing ground can appear to be operating correctly, but can cause inconsistent communication throughout the network. Step 6. Ask for help. The OEM that built the vehicle is your primary resource for how that vehicle was designed and manufactured. They should be your first phone call if something on the vehicle is not working, and you don't understand why. The VMUX hardware and software are designed and manufactured by Weldon. If you have software or hardware questions, or there are truck issues that are not getting resolved, please contact Weldon. We want to help find solutions. Visit our website at www.akronbrass.com. Click on the Vehicle Electronics tab. This will open a box where you can see all the Weldon and Class 1 links. Click the link for firmware and diagnostic software at the bottom of the list under the Weldon logo. Node operating system files are near the top of the page. Download the zip file, extract all, and copy the OS files to the VMUX folder under My Documents. This folder gets created when the downloader program is installed. Scroll down the page to find the installation files for VMUX downloader, diagnostics, and the transceiver driver file. The latest driver file can also be found at ftdichip.com. Several PDF documents are available, including the six-step guide, plus downloader and diagnostics manuals. The troubleshooting essentials, and the VMUX connector spec documents, cover much of the information that has been discussed in this video. The vehicle data recorder software installer includes the VDR extraction, viewer, and configuration tools. The USB driver is required to connect to the VDR USB port, but VDR connection can also be done through the VMUX transceiver. There have been recent incidents where the VDR USB driver is not recognized, and an incorrect Microsoft driver gets installed for the VDR. To correct this problem, you can install the driver manually, but only after running the VDR USB installation file. Open Device Manager. The VDR may be in other devices. Click Update Driver. Click Browse My Computer for Driver Software. Browse to Drive C, Program Files, x86, Woden, Drivers, VDR. Click Next, and the correct driver should be installed. Visit the Akron Brass YouTube page at www.youtube.com slash user slash Akron Brass videos for helpful diagnostic, downloader, and VDR videos. Contact Weldon at 800-989-2718. This concludes part 2. Thanks for watching.